All right, welcome to Lab 2, AC Network Analysis. And welcome to my kitchen again. This is the equipment we're going to be using for Lab 2. Of course, the hand tech, and we'll be using uh, the probes, uh, two channels, so two probes, and plus we'll be using the function generator as our AC source, which will be under the AWG. We'll be using the breadboard, uh, jumper wires to hook everything together, uh, capacitor, 100 micro Henry choke, and a couple of resistors. All right, so that's it for parts. First thing we're going to do is we're going to check our components. So I've got three resistors. The first one is a 10 ohm, and it measures out at 10.0 ohms, which is pretty good. All right, the second one I have is a 100 ohm resistor. And that measures as 100.0 ohms. Again, that's really good. These resistors seem to be pretty high quality in the Eligo kits. They seem to be 1% or better. And this last resistor is a 220 ohm resistor, which comes in at uh, 219.4. So that's really good. That's, that's better than half a percent. So we can just call that 220 and, and we'll move forward from there. Now this is interesting. The uh, the capacitors that I picked. Okay, first let's switch this over to to capacitance. All right, so now we're measuring capacitance. So the capacitor that I picked from my circuit was one of the uh, the 10 nanofarad capacitors out of the kit. But when I actually measured them, watch this. They're not 10 nanofarad. They're 50 nanofarad. And I checked them on three separate meters, and all the meters came up and called them 50 nanofarads, anywhere from, depending on the meter, anywhere from 47 to 50 nanofarads. So, uh, check your capacitors. They could be incorrect. All right, so let's start laying out our breadboard. I'm going to try to emulate the, uh, the multi-SIM circuit that I've made, uh, which will be at the end of this video, along with the voltage and courage measurements. So first thing I'm going to do is put in a, a negative and a positive, and these will be the inputs from the output of the function generator on the hand tech. Now I, I clearly have speeded things up a bit here, so I'm building my inductor loop here. And you can see that I've put two yellow wires in that so I can do current measurements between those wires for the inductance loop. There's the 100 ohm resistor, the 10 ohm resistor, and a jumper over to, to ground. There we go. So here's the loop, the inductor, the current measuring spot, the 100 ohm, the 10 ohm, and back to ground. Now let's do the capacitance side. So again, I'm going to build a loop where I can take my current measurement. I'm going to insert the capacitor, the 50 nanofarad capacitor, my 220 ohm resistor, and then a jumper back to ground. And, uh, I got this in the wrong spot. Hang on. I'm off by one pin. I'll just redo this. And of course the legs are bent. Uh, try it a second time. Uh, there we go. Okay. So now I've got the capacitor loop built. And I'm going to add a second ground so I can hook up both the ground of the function generator and the ground of the oscilloscope to the breadboard. At least that's, that's my plan. All right, so that's the circuit all built. All right, so that's everything set up. So now we're going to use the hand tech. Now this is my hand tech, which is a higher end model, but this is what you guys are using, so this is what I'll be using. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up the uh, the AC source, which is the output of the function generator. So I'm going to hit AWG. I'm going to select sine wave, 4,000 kilohertz in my case, and one volt peak, which is two volt peak to peak. And then I'm going to hit run play so that the output indicator turns green, which means I have a signal on my output. Now I'm going to hook this up to that red and black wire that I put on the board, and my circuit uh, will now have power to it. There we go. Okay, so now I have power to my circuit. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, the channel 1 of my oscilloscope, which will be the reference, which is basically me monitoring the function generator, and I'm going to hook up that second ground. Now I'm pretty sure the grounds are common, but in the lab that wouldn't be the case, so I'm trying to emulate that. And my scope probe is set to times 1. So when we go to oscilloscope mode, uh, channel 1, we check everything, AC coupled, and check the probe. Yep, and the probe's at times one. That's where we want to be. So now I'll just do a quick test. And there's the output of the function generator, 
two volts peak to peak and then I'm going to hardwire that into the board and that's now going to be my reference for the two voltage measurements that I'm going to be taking. So now let's go over to channel two. There we go. Okay, channel two. Set this one up the same way. Uh, AC coupled and we don't need this ground because the ground between these two scope probes is common and now I can probe right after the inductor to get my uh, my first voltage reading and there we have it we have so we have channel one which is two volts peak to peak you can see it's it's one one volt max min and channel two looks like it's about 80 90 millivolts something like that uh, plus minus peak uh, I don't believe these hand techs do the math for you but there's the thing all right so now we'll slide it over to the capacitance side we take off the channel 2 or the the green trace and we put it over by the capacitance and uh, oh, the signal is much larger there so we have to scale that back down to something that we can see on the display there we go and again you'll see now with reference it is uh, it's like uh, 530 millivolts something like that and and you can see that rather to the right of the reference it's now to the left of the reference so there's the there's the phase shift involved and you can actually measure the phase shift you can measure the time difference between the two waveforms and do that as a function of a uh, phase and you can actually get the phase difference between the reference voltage and the voltage on the other uh, and the uh, sorry the phase between the signal on one side of the capacitor and on the other side of the capacitor and you can do the same thing for the inductor as well all right so we're done we're done doing our voltage measurements now so we'll we'll get rid of the scope probes because we don't need those uh, where's the other wire oh there it is so we'll we'll get rid of the scope probes now and disconnect the ground and now we're going to switch the hand tech over to DVM mode so I'm going to steal my leads off of my my uh, big brother hand tech there and plug them in we're now going to be measuring current and we'll set the DVM and we'll slide over to AC milliamps right there and I'm in the wrong spot so I'll slide that over to milliamps and now I can measure my current so I created those two current loops which is really handy so I can just disconnect the two yellow wires and hook them up to my probes and it makes it easy for me to do a current measurement so I'll disconnect those two wires and make sure that I hook up the plus closest to the signal source. There's the ground and the plus. And I'm looking at mm, 0.214 milliamps. All right. So there's that. Uh, there's that current reading. That's the choke reading. And I decided to check the current on the other side as well. So I'm going to reestablish the. Uh, the path on the uh, on the uh, the choke side and I'll slide over and disconnect the current monitoring path on the capacitor side and again I'll use my scope probes with the plus side closest to the generator and I'll measure the current there and I'm getting 0.749 milliamps so that's it. Those are the readings that you need. That'll. Uh, those are the two currents that I got. And I'm uh, just going to put that back to normal real quick. All right. So, uh, so that's my circuit with all the measurements that you need. Uh, your circuit will be different, but that's it. All right. Here's my uh, my planned circuit. The only change being that the capacitor is now 50 nanofarads instead of uh, or 0 0.05 micro instead of 0 0.1 and here's me adding the uh, the scope and you can see uh, the leading and trailing edges of the capacitor loop and the inductor loop and here's my current measurements in the same so that's it that's the end of lab two